Curl is a discipline that Australians positively excel at on the world stage, with six junior world champions in the past 12 years and a two-time elite world champion in West Australia's Sam Hill. For the 2012 season, the Real Insurance Gravity Cup has been reinvigorated with new sponsorship and rules to more closely match the conditions and pressures that riders face on the World Cup circuit. It's designed to be a breeding ground for the champions of tomorrow. The main change for the elite riders is the fact that we've uh, put seeding points in now for the uh, seeding race. So seeding, the seeding points at 50% of the final points is going to be absolutely crucial to the, to the determination of uh, who's going to win the series. A very highly credentialed field was entered for the opening round, including Sam Hill, who, after a season plagued with illness and injury, is firmly back on track for 2012. The Gravity Cup forming an important part of his preparation for the international season. I was definitely disappointed not, not to back it up from last, last year, but uh, I guess that's what's given me the motivation to be here and be, be healthy and start training earlier and want to get back on top and uh, want to start that all off with the national series. But making Hill's job all the harder is his Monster Energy specialised teammate. Troy Brosnan has moved up into the senior elite category. You wouldn't think he goes that fast for a little years, but he somehow does it, so I know I have to uh, keep on top of my game. Also in attendance and gunning for the win was another former world champion from the discipline of four cross. With the demise of the discipline he's dominated for so many years at World Cup level, Jared Graves from Queensland has made the switch back to downhill, in which he's a former national champion. I've been doing a bit of training the last 10 weeks, just trying to get back down to more downhill sides. You know, I was four crosses all about being big and strong and, you know, strong and fast out of the start. Training ready for next year, trying to get, uh, get fit and strong for that to do the best I can at the World Cups and downhill next year. Threadbow also hosted the return to competition of former junior downhill world champion Tracy Hanna after a four year hiatus. The time flew since I've been on a bike, I rode motos and like I just had a bit of fun on my BMX jumping and stuff but to be back on a bike is like, I don't know, it just feels natural to me and to have that big break has just made it even more like giving me even more drive and determination for the years to come. The legendary Threadbow Downhill course is longer than most courses on the World Cup at three and a half kilometres and dropping over 600 vertical metres. It's fast, rocky and gravity fuelled. With series points now on the line, the seeding run would see no soft pedalling from the contenders. In the elite women's category, there would be only one name that the crowd was waiting on and she didn't disappoint. Tracy Hanna set down a time of 6 minutes and 14 seconds, besting Michelle Crisp by over 40 seconds, while in the junior women, Sydney's Danielle Beecroft put down a run that would have seen her seeded second in elite. With Troy Brosnan now in the elite category, the junior men would be a more open affair, with current junior national champion Connor Fearon widely tipped. But a case of tonsillitis would see him barely able to make it down the course, and he qualified in last position, while Dave McMillan and Breadboat's local Joey Vavoda qualified fastest. If you weren't a current or former world champion, you didn't have a chance of making the top four in the seeding run. Jared Graves set a mark of 5.37 early on and wouldn't be beaten. The closest was Troy Brosnan, two seconds back, followed by Canberra's Ben Corey, and almost 10 seconds back was Sam Hill, who looked to be keeping much in reserve. Didn't seem like he pedalled too much, but I'm sure he's got a lot in the tank and it'll be uh, good to see you know, what he pulls out tomorrow and I think it'll be pretty fast. After overnight storms, race day dawned with sunshine, but the now wet track could be the decisive factor in the race, with mud to contend with in some sections, while the loose and dusty sections had improved. The light showers continued throughout practice, and the first to hit the course for their race would be the junior women. Again, Danielle Beecroft cemented her reputation as the next big thing in women's downhill, with a convincing win over Ella scanlon Bloor. I'm definitely happy. It was, it was good conditions, and it started to rain a bit, but 
Had a good run, very quick. The elite women saw a battle between two former national champions. Canberra's Claire Whiteman improved on her seeding time by over 13 seconds, but it wouldn't be enough to defeat the very motivated Queenslander, Tracy Hanna. Look at the speed in the final corner. Tracy Hanna, 6.15.73. It's definitely a good start. I didn't really know what to expect with the new up-and-coming riders in Australia. and But I feel good now and I feel confident. The junior men was a very close battle. The top three separated by less than five seconds. Having recovered significantly overnight, South Australia's Connor Fearon was first on track and set a time of 5.49. He would occupy the hot seat until the third last rider hit the course. Thomas Crimmins, also a Breadbow local, almost matched Joey Vavoda's seating time, but Vavoda showed he had more to give, slicing another half second off his time to take his first Gravity Cup victory. 5.46. Yeah, I'm pretty happy how I ended up. Um, pretty hard weekend racing. Um, come back from Worlds and went all right, so pretty happy with that. The event that everyone had been waiting for, the elite men. It would again come down to a battle of the former and current world champions. Only the positions on the podium were left in doubt. Sam Hill was the first of the big contenders to emerge from the trees at the finish, and if he looked fast, it's because he was, recording a 5.33.87, beating Jared Graves' seeding mark by over five seconds. 2001 junior downhill world champion Ben Corey was next on course, improving on his seeding run by two seconds. The second last rider on course would be Troy Brosnan. He was looking for a dream start to his first season in Elite, and as he flew down the course, the dream would become a reality, eclipsing his teammates' time by over two seconds. And the final rider, hoping to make a successful start in his transition back to downhill, was the fastest seed, Jared Graves. He's going to go close. It's going to be a podium, but ladies and gentlemen, Jared Graves. Sam's always been up there and I know he's just uh, came off pretty bad shoulder injury so it's probably not 100% but you know we've been practicing all week and he's been riding really fast so it's just good I had a you know smooth pinned run couldn't ask much more. Yeah I feel I've been putting in a bit of work at home so I feel like my uh, fitness and form isn't too bad probably need a bit more time on the downhill bike and uh, a bit more racing because it's been a little while with my injuries and should be good to go by the, by the World Cup season starts, though, so that's, that's the main goal. The next round of the Real Insurance National Series moves to the Victorian Alps, where Lycra will meet body armour as Mount Buller hosts both the Gravity and All Mountain Cups.